Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me for the second part of the presentation on personalizing your decompression planning with the ODIVE sensor. Now, if you've been following me in this YouTube channel for a while, you might have seen that um, almost two years ago now, I put up a presentation about how the ODIVE sensor had helped me personalize my decompression planning. That presentation was recorded about three to six months after I started using the device. Now we're about 18 months after that. And what I want to do is really just give you an update and share with you some of the more recent findings I've had. Most of them will relate to how two divers can have very, very different readings, so very, very different reactions to the same decompression profile after one dive. So that's what I want to talk about for the next half an hour or so. Before we jump into this, for those of you that aren't really familiar with the sensor, for those of you that maybe haven't seen the previous presentation, I'm going to start by just giving you a quick overview about what the sensor actually does. What you can see on the screen now is pretty much what we're going to talk about, and that's personalizing your decompression planning and why individuals matter. Now, I'm going to hide the thumbnail because I think that's going to be a little bit too distracting. Okay, cool. The goal obviously is to make your dive safer with the help of this little sensor and of knowing what's actually happening in your body. So two parts of this presentation. Part one is just a quick recap on what I talked about a little bit over a year ago, what the ODIVE sensor is and how it works. Part two, that's where it becomes more interesting. That's the findings and in-depth analysis of the differences between two divers using a series of planned decompression dives last October. What the ODIVE is, it's a small handheld Doppler sensor for day-to-day -day use by divers like you and I. Maybe you have to be a little bit geeky, but you don't need any specific medical training to use it. It helps if somebody shows you how to use it, but that's really all you need. It allows you to measure post-dive bubbles in your bloodstream, and you take those measurements on your shoulders. If you haven't seen this before, have a look at the previous presentation um, and I might actually overlay this slide with a couple of pictures just to show you the positioning. You can combine your measurements with the dive profile that you upload from your dive computer. And this data is collected in an app which you simply download on your smartphone. The information is processed and within a few minutes you receive a quality rating of your dive that takes into account any bubbles that were measured as well as the severity, the sharpness of your dive profile. Once you have that, you can then simulate the effects of potential changes to your dive profile. So you can figure out whether additional decompression diving, uh, sorry, additional decompression time using a different gas or changing your gradient factors would have had an impact on the quality rating of your dive and therefore on your safety. Um, and which one of those has the biggest impact? So how does it work? What you see on the left here is um, a few rankings. Um, so you see some dives on the left that are in the yellow, so they have slightly lower ratings, and some dives on the right that are in the green with slightly higher ratings. The quality index is made up of the bubbles measured, the severity of your dive profile. Those two components come together and determine the quality index of your dive. Out of a number of 100, Anything between 100 and 75 is um, considered to be green, relatively good, little room for improvement. Anything between 75 and 50 is considered to be yellow. Um, so there's room for improvement there. Anything below 50 is considered to be orange rather than red, suggesting that there's actually quite a big room for improvement here. The initial findings that I talked about when I did the first presentation were that gradient factors are just the beginning of sufficient dive planning. One type of gradient factor does not fit all deco dives. And you may also want to look at the ratio between bottom time and deco time. Yeah. Don't want to underestimate long, shallow dives. And by shallow in this context, I mean around 30, 35 meters. So that's what I shared in the previous presentation. 
And now we're going to head on to the new stuff. So what have we got? What we have here is something that really surprised me last October when it happened, the huge difference between two divers. Now at the top, you have diver number one, and at the bottom, you have diver number two. Diver number one is me. I'm just going to put my hand up and say it. Um, so that means um, age range, mid 40s, female, no history of DCS. Diver number two is my friend Chris, who is in his early 70s. He's male and he has no history of DCS either. And what you can see is that there's a huge difference between the results of the first two dives, but not so much of a difference in the results of the second two dives. So what are the dives? Um, first two dives, the ones that you see on the left, we're in the 40 meter range, 41 meters, 42 meters respectively, done on CCR using air diluent. Yes, that's quite deep for air diluent. Um, gradient factors, 50, 70, warm water, no excessive workload, pretty much just drifting along a reef, a little bit of working if there was an upwelling or a current pushing a little bit, but nothing really that would have led to any overexertion. The second two dives, um, 52 and 62 meters respectively, also done on CCR, this time with the trimix diluent, gradient factors changed to 50, 60. Once again, warm water, no excessive workload. Findings. Diver number one scores far worse or is taking a far greater risk for the air diluent deco dives compared to diver number two. For the trimix dives, the divers achieve very similar results. Diver number one actually scores slightly better. You can't see the numbers on the slide, but we're talking about a difference of two to 5%. So it's not exactly a very significant difference, um, but for the dives number one and two, the air dilu and deco dives here on the left, we see a massive difference. So what happened? On the left, we have diver number one. On the two, uh, on the right, we have diver number two. Similarities, both divers lose points, um, quality points to the severity of the dive profile. You can see the number 22 and the number 23 there. That's pretty much the algorithm that is judging the dive, um, saying, you did relatively little decompression in relation to quite a significant bottom time. Bearing in mind, no deco was missed, computers were clear, the dive plan had been followed. Um, however, the people behind the O-Dive sensor do a lot of work also based on commercial diving tables. So their um, approach to dive planning is somewhat different. So both divers lose a similar amount of points to the severity of the dive profile. Diver number one then also loses 20 points. You see there's a 22 and then a 20 um, to bubbles measured by the sensor. That means there's a significant amount of micro bubbles found in the body, whereas none were detected in diver number two. Okay, so you see that uh, diver number two still achieves a um, safety index, quality index rating of 77, whereas diver number one um, at 58 out of 100 is actually heading for the lower range of the yellow ratings. So there's significant room for improvement there. Below those two columns, you see some of the potential simulation adjustments. We're going to take a closer look at them now. What could the divers have changed? So this is all done on diver number one. You see that the 58, the original rating of the dive is there. Um, and then we're looking at four different options of things that could have been changed. And we're gonna start from the left. Option one shows you what would have most likely happened had I changed my air diluent for a trimix of 21.35. If you follow the little sliding scales down below the original column, you see that what I have changed is the diluent, and I'm assuming a trimix 21.35. 
it improves the rating to 78. So that's a significant change. Option number two is now combining a trimix diluent and 10 more minutes of decompression. That's the little sliding scale at the top there. So it's putting, it's making two changes, uh, changing the gas as well as the amount of decompression and it improves the predicted rating to 84. So had I changed my gas and had I done additional decompression, I would have most likely scored a much higher rating and been safer. Option number three, 10 more minutes of deco, but back to air diluent. And now we have a very slight increase from 58 to 66. And option number four, changing gradient factor high from 70 to 60. Again, there's a little bit of an improvement, but nothing too big. So what we can see is that trimix appears to have the bigger effect on this particular diver, meaning me, um, compared to additional decompression. Combined, they have the strongest effect, but the trimix seems to be making the biggest difference. So does trimix really have a bigger effect? We're now going to look at the the second dive. So if we quickly jump back, you see here the dive we've just looked at is the one on the left, rating of 58. And the dive we're now going to look at is that 42 meter dive uh, from the 20th of October that scored only 40. So let's see what Trimix would have achieved there. So again, from left to right, we're looking at similar options to the previous dive. First, um, change is simply moving from air diluent to a Trimix 2135, and the rating, the predicted rating, increases from 42 to 63. Option number two, we have the combination of Trimix diluent and more decompression, so once again changing the diluent from air to a Trimix 2135 and adding 10 minutes of deco. Option number three, like before, uh, more deco, but going back to air diluent. And again, you see the change is not very significant. Option number four, changing the gradient factor alone. And the sensor software predicts that that would have had a rather small influence. You can also see that in none of those predictions uh, does the diver actually make it into the green. So, but again, we're getting the same basic result for this particular diver as we got with the previous dive that the combination of 10 minutes more deco and changing from an air diluent to a trimix diluent would have had the biggest impact on the potential dive safety. What about diver number two? Diver number two was doing better on these two air diluent dives. Um, so we're going to try the same options on diver number two. So here now on the left, we have a change of diluent to Trimix 2135. Potential rating could have improved. And in the middle, again, the combination of Trimix and additional deco, which would have improved the rating the most. And all the way over on the right, we have additional deco only, slight improvement as well. But also for this diver, um, the prediction is that a combination of using Trimix diluent rather than air um, and adding more deco would have had the biggest impact. But why? Why are the two divers so different? So this is where we're actually doing a little bit of soul searching. And that is what I did after those two dives because I was questioning whether I could actually continue the series of dives because um, the ratings were so bad, but also there were some symptoms of decompression stress. So, but the most important takeaway from these different ratings, from these different readings is that no two physiologies are ever the same. And that's, I think something very important for divers, for diving instructors to realize, many of us follow very similar dive plans, very similar dive computer suggestions, but our physiologies 
can be fundamentally different. So, and that is why, because of that difference, that is why personalized deco and measuring what's happening in your body is really the only way to know what is happening with you and how you can make your dives safer. So in my case, yeah. my 40 my 40 meter CCR dives simply need to be done on Trimix. Now, even going back over a year, that tendency was already showing up that I found I was generally scoring better and feeling better um, if I did CCR dives in this range on Trimix. Um, potential reason for the difference at the time of these dives I was about four weeks past COVID recovery I had completed a spirometry test and had a chest x-ray both of which turned out normal um, and my aerobic fitness could have been better at that point now that's something that maybe many of us can say for ourselves but that is something that I knew and Yes, as a result, I have started jogging again more regularly. So now I'm recording this presentation in January. The dive data is from October. Any updates since then? Yes, um, I've spent November and December completing quite a lot of CCO trimix dives in the 50 to 70 meter range. And they seem to confirm that the combination of using trimix diluent using gradient factors 50, 60, and improved aerobic fitness make a difference. So my scores since then have been in the 85 to 100 point range. Um, 1995, most of them, but altogether 85 to 100. What am I taking away as well? Um, regular checks make sense. Um, your physical fitness changes, your physical, your body's physical ability to withstand the rigors of a dive can be different depending on your form of the day. Have you slept okay? Are you perhaps a little bit dehydrated? All these things can have an impact on how your body copes with micro bubbles, bubbles during and after a dive. So if you want to know more, um, you have my email address there, you have um, a WhatsApp number there that you can contact. You can also leave a comment after this presentation. What can we take away from it? For me personally, having the sensor and therefore having the ability to measure how my body is coping with decompression diving is invaluable. Being able to see on a, on a scale um, how my body's performing or how my body's coping with these dives, I find hugely valuable. Um, what I've also found in the nearly two years of using a sensor is that it changes. Your form really can change. It changes with um, garments you wear. It changes with the environment you're in. It changes with the um, level of exertion that you're dealing with. So there's really never a time to say, um, this is my rating and this is what it is and it never changes. So that's why one of the things that I like is not only that I can take my own readings, but also that I can check how they are changing over time. So that is why I find personalized decompression really is going to be the way forward if you're going to do deep, long, severe dives. I hope you found this a little bit interesting. I hope you found this a little bit enlightening. Any questions, drop me a message. Um, if you're interested in getting a sensor for yourself, um, feel free to get in touch. Happy to connect you with the team at Azote Systems. And yes, full disclosure, um, I am or Dark Horizon Diving is a dealer for these little sensors. But that's not why I'm doing this presentation. This presentation is there to show you just how different two divers can cope with the same diving conditions. Hopefully see you on the water soon.